to you all dearly beloved listeners and viewers. I pray and hope that the grace of God is still sustaining us all. This is the word became flesh coming to you live from the CCL Ghana radio. Adam Fie. We are very sorry for the time that we are coming to you. But I cannot explain and give you all the reasons but just take our apology. We'll do our best not to let it happen again. Have you picked your Bible? Have you picked your notepad and your pen? And have you invited the Holy Spirit? If you have done all these, then indeed you are ready. If you haven't done them, please, you have just a minute to do that. And I also want to remind you what word has taken flesh in you. Share that in the comment section. You will not only be sharing your views, but you would be blessing all the people who would be reading later. Father, you are very much welcome. Thank you, my sister. Father, please, how are you doing? I am very well by God's grace. <laughs> I trust you also well. By grace, I'm also very well. We thank God. So we want to begin our session in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to gather once more to share your word. We pray and invite your Holy Spirit. Father, come and dwell in our midst. You ascended yesterday. And by your ascension, we know we are to look out for something better, the Holy Spirit. Even as we journey through this ninth day of novena, Lord Jesus, be with us all. And at the end, may we have had a full encounter with your Holy Spirit. Thank you and be with us in this session as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Father, over yes, to sister. you. So we thank God for another Friday, the forty-first day after Easter, and the first day of Pentecost Novena. And beautifully, the time, the second time we are listening to the first sermon of the Pope. Pope Peter started the sermon last week, and we are continuing the sermon. And we know we will pick lessons not just from the sermon, but also situations around the sermon, and make us blessed. Let us listen to the word of God, not just as Peter speaking, but because he's inspired by the Holy Spirit to talk. You know, what makes this speech so beautiful is that it is the very first talk after reception of the Holy Spirit. After the reception of power, the very first talk. So as we receive this words of the Lord, I pray we also encounter that same power and be renewed, especially on this first day of our Pentecost Novena. Amen. Amen. So possibly we'll continue where we left off. We started reading the home law of St. Peter. And we may pick from where we left the other time. Okay. That was Acts chapter 2. So we continue from 29, verse 29. Yes. Acts 2, verse 29. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne, he spoke with foreknowledge about the resurrection of the Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to hate and whose body did not see corruption. God raised this man Jesus to life, and of that we are all witnesses. Now raised to the highs by God's right hand, he has received from the Father the Holy Spirit, who was promised, and what 
you see and hear is the outpouring of that spirit. For David himself never went up to heaven, but yet he said, The Lord declared to my Lord, Take your seat at my right hand, till I have made your enemies your footstool. For this reason, the whole house of Israel can be certain that the Lord and Christ, whom God has made, is this Jesus whom you crucified. Amen. Amen. So that's the very first homily or sermon of Pope Peter <laughs> after Jesus left. Mm. So we can call it the inaugural speech of the Pope. When the Lord handed over the church to him, he waited and received power before he made his original speech. Mm. And what makes it so beautiful is that he speaks with a gathering on the day of Pentecost the feast of weeks, the feast, the joyful day of the Jews. And the homely is not, it doesn't look so piercing. Yeah, if you check the weddings, it yeah, doesn't look so very, piercing. Very, simple. Very simple narration. Hmm. But look at the impact. We will be narrating the impact soon. But I want to draw attention to the fact that his homily was simple. Very, very simple. With simple words. Just a reference to Joshua, uh, Joel. Then another reference to David. Psalm 110. Then a little exposition of the nature of Jesus. And then after these simple, simple things, he leaves the people to make their own decisions. Hmm. And I compare with the way we struggle with powerful theological speeches. Very powerful speeches now. The thoughts we give of late, we are bringing out the nuances of the words and all those things. And then we discover that it is not the man. There is a power behind these words. Was simple words. Jesus died and rose. David talked about him. He seated on high. God has given him the promised spirit and he has poured us on humanity and we are witnesses to this full stop. End of homily. Hmm. I think when your pastor preached this in church, you would think, Father, they are in it. <laughs> Today, Father they didn't say <laughs> anything. Uh -huh. It looks so simple, but let's look at the impact of this simple homily. Hmm. And that will help us understand the workings of the Holy Spirit properly. Hmm. Verse 37. Yeah. Hearing this, they were cut to the heart. No, just, just look at that alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Yes. So you, 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 you discover it is not the words that is making the impact. Mm -hmm. Something else is. Yes, something else is influencing the hearts of the people who are listening. Mm. So it's not about our oratory. Mm. It is good to learn. It is good to know theology. Mm. It is very important. I did it for nine years. I studied the word of God for nine years. When I add processes, then it's 10 years. If I add the biblical uh, BA, the Bible, Bible uh, study we added in secondary school, then that would have been about 12 years studying the word of God. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't bring the impact. Mm -hmm. there, there is something beyond it. Mm -hmm. How can somebody be cut into the heart with this simple message? And that keeps on with what we have been stressing until this time. Waiting for the power, waiting for the anointing, waiting for the grace, mm -hmm. waiting for the Holy Spirit. And that will lead people to conversion. You remember Jesus told them in John 14 that the Holy Spirit has threefold ministry. He will convict the word first of sin, then of judgment, and then of righteousness. And I think that is exactly what the Holy Spirit was doing, mm -hmm. convicting the word of sin. Mm -hmm. Because there was fire. You remember in Hebrews 1, 7, I guess, he said he has made his messengers fire. Mm -hmm. So the message that goes must be Carried by fire. And if that is done, it doesn't matter who is carrying it. There will be effect. Mm. Impact and transformation. Mm. So maybe even at the workplace, nobody listens to you when you talk. Bosses don't hear you. They don't. If subordinates, that is more painful. If you are the manager or the boss and subordinates are not listening to you. <laughs> uh, if you are a subordinate and your boss is not listening to you, it's painful but not so much. But if you are the boss and subordinates are not listening to you, it makes it so challenging and uh, difficult. But we meet somebody who says simple things and people are cut into the heart. And I think that is worth keeping in our heart and mm. minds, even mm. as we narrate what happened. Mm. Yeah. And said to Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, brothers? You must repent, Peter answered. And every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise that was made is for you and your children and for all those who are far away, for all those whom the Lord our God is calling to himself. He spoke to them for a long time using many other arguments, and he urged them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. They accepted what he said and were baptized. That very day, about 3,000 were added to their number. Beautiful. I don't know if it is a methodology St. Peter is giving us. He started the message not from the human dimension. He started his preaching purely from the narration of God's event. Mm. Then when people got convinced, then he begins to tell them what they don't have to do. It looks as if we have changed this model of evangelization. We go confronting people with sin and telling people they are going to hell. You know, excuse my language, but I hate to hear preachers who come only to condemn. Just to condemn. They come and immediately they start, you are going to hell, God is going to kill you, God is going to do that, God is going to do this, and all those things. I mean, I'm not saying it is not God's message. Possibly you are Jeremiah. But even Jeremiah began with, I know the promises I have before you. He talked about the promises of peace before he confronted them with their sins. Mm. Uh, so Peter is giving us a pattern of ministry that we should proclaim Jesus. It is when people accept Jesus that we can confront their sins. And this is how it does. You know, Jesus is the light of the world. If somebody receives the light of the world and the light is shed on the heart of the individual, we can see the heart of the individual clearly. We can help the person to become better. Mm. But if we are not in the light already, and if the person is not in the light already and you are confronting the person, it will be as if you are condemning people to hell. They don't know why they should accept the Lord. No, Peter gave it very simple. The reason why you should accept Jesus is that he is risen from the dead. He has been lifted up. He is with the Father. And he has been given all power. So if you don't join with him, you are not with the powerful one. Mm. You are not at where there is greatness. And you know, at times people preach as if heaven is depopulated. <laughs> uh, but we read Revelation and we are told there are uncountable numbers of people worshipping the Lord. Mm. So how beautiful it is to draw people's attention to come and be members of these uncountable people. Uh, but the fear factor, you know, any atras better than vinegar. Let us go the any approach of evangelization. Hmm. Any atras better than vinegar. Very it's true. not about who oh, come and send you, you are going to hell, you are going to hell, you are going to hell. No, no, no. It should be about sharing the love of God, letting people discover the love of God, allowing them to come into con 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 uh, contact with this love, and I think it will work a lot of good, rather than pushing people out of grace by making you yourself the only saint and making all other sinners banned for hell. <laughs> no, Peter speaks in such a way as identifying himself with the people. And he made them feel so comfortable to accept Jesus. And that is why we have that huge number. Anyway, the number that is figurative. Because the population of Jerusalem was not even up to that number. <laughs> it only means the largest of number you can imagine. And that's what it means. It's a figurative number. So don't go and say, you're going to minister one day for 3,000. Uh, <laughs> that means possible. No, 3 is a perfect number. And yeah. 0 is a symbol of infinity. So it was a perfect congregation. Like the number was too huge that you can call it a perfect repentance mm. of people. Mm. And that's mm. why we mentioned 3,000. Mm. So okay. it's not about 1, 2, 3, 4, 500. 3, nah, no, no, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So it's a you, know, you know, in my, if you look at my Bible, there I've written Exodus 32, 28. Okay. In Exodus 32, 28, uh, something the Israelites sinned and God punished them. And it's stated there that about 3,000 people perished that, that day. That day, exactly. And this one says 3,000 exactly. being saved. So you, you remember that that also is figurative. Yeah. So the number was so huge that you can say this was a complete distraction. Mm. And this one was a complete repentance. Yeah. And so when you hear numbers or see numbers in the Bible, don't be in a rush mm. to conclude. A lot of these things will be happening in the house of the apostles. Okay. We'll be mentioning a lot of numbers. Some will be very symbolic. Others will be very figurative. And others will be numerological, and it's a, a part of theology, the theology of numbers. <laughs> As with this, we will just tell you the number was huge enough yeah. for repentance. So when you begin ministry, don't think you have to get 3,000 a day. Uh -huh. So let us go through. God will take care. <laughs> 
the early Christian community. Beautiful. These remained faithful to the teaching of the apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. And everyone was filled with awe. The apostles worked many signs and miracles, and all who shared the faith owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and distributed the prices among themselves according to what each one needed. Each day, with one heart, they regularly went to the temple, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. Amen. Amen. We have a lot to learn from this theology, but I won't I will just be highlighting some theological issues there. Mm. Not be going too deep. The first theological issue is about the fact that the teaching of the apostles is ranked higher than scriptures in this simple passage. If you check the Bible it was not mentioned. Mm -hmm. It was about the teaching of the apostles, apostles the, the breaking of bread, the brotherhood, mm -hmm. and then fellowship. The uh, and that is the reason why the college church says it's not sola scriptura. And we should keep in mind that the first book of the Bible was written 57 years after Jesus. Hmm. Yes, the gospel according to St. Mark. That's the earliest gospel, the first gospel. And the apostles lived for like 20 something years before Mark put his words together. So it was all about check doctrine, check teachings. And it was very reliable. Why? Because it was a spirit-led ministration by the church. The Lord has already equipped them. Note that there was no New Testament book at this time. There was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And they were moving from the Old Testament. They have received power. The, the, the speech of Peter made it so clear that out of ignorance, those who were reading the scriptures killed Jesus. <laughs> You know, the Sadducees led the attack. Mm -hmm. And the high priests were those involved. And these were those who had the Old Testament. They read the law, the prophets, and the writings all the time. And then they were shifting from that point to a different era. And in moving to a different era, the apostolic teaching became very important. But one thing you should notice is that the apostolic teaching was based on the Old Testament too. Mm -hmm. They were reflecting theologically the Old Testament in the light of Easter. That is why Peter, for instance, will quote Joshua and Joel and will also quote the Psalms. Mm. And let me add before I forget that the Old Testament the apostles used was what we call the Septuagint. Mm. The 49 book Old Testament. The 39 plus, I mean the 47 book Old Testament. 47, excuse my language. The 47 book Old Testament. If you have Bible parallel and you have the Greek, you will discover that that was the Bible the apostles used. So straight away, keep in mind, it is called the Ale Alexandrian Canon. That's the name we call it. So keep in mind that the book, the Bible of the early church, the Old Testament of the early church is what the Catholic church have as a set, the set, set to agent. Mm. The 72, the New Testament to come and add up, then to make it the 72. Then the second theological issue is that the breaking of bread was daily. Mm. It was not weekends. Each day with one heart, yeah. Yes, each day. So, daily mass began with the apostles. It is not something new. So, if you are Catholic and somebody says Catholics worship on Sundays, it is a lie. Catholics do not worship on Sundays. Catholics worship every day. every day. So, worship is for every day, not for Sundays. Uh -huh. mm. Many people are not conscious of that. They go for morning mass every day, but they still hold on that we worship on Sundays. Because probably the church says that Sorry, in the, in the, uh, the, the first obligation go for church on Sundays and all ladies of obligation. Hey. You know, Sunday celebrates Easter. Okay. Sunday is the celebration of the resurrection. That is why even during Lent on Sundays we play the drums and the tomb. Mm. It is a joyful occasion. You no, know, Jesus resurrected on Sunday. So among all the days, Sunday becomes a special day for us. It becomes an honorable day for us, a gracious day for us, a glorious day for us. Mm. So we celebrate it with a special pomp and pageantry. I hope the words are right. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, yes so it is yes. solemnity of yes. solemnities. Yeah. 
And that is why Sunday becomes very important for us. So that's another theological issue that is coming out. Mm -hmm. So the first issue we raise is that the apostolic teaching was very valid and that is what the church relied on in the early church. So church doctrine and teachings of the bishops and what we call the magisterium, the teaching authority, has existed from the beginning. So when we say this is not in the Bible, but it is part of church teachings and doctrine, don't be worried. Mm -hmm. The second is that the worship of the Lord is every day, not just on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind also that going for communion is not annually. Some churches have it annually. Others have it monthly. We as a church do not have it weekly. We have it daily. Some people think we don't need to have it daily because of our sins. Then we don't need to have it at all. Jesus is not a reward of sins. Mm. He is a healing for sinners. Mm. That is why in Luke chapter 15, he will invite sinners and task collectors to come closer to him. Mm. And they are the people he will always stay with and nourish. Those that he will take, no, he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, Ephesians, mm. and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Mm. If you are not receiving the light daily, how will you go to light? If I am sick, I will begin to receive healing gradually as I take my medication. And the more the doses begin to increase in myself, then I become well. What I would advise is that we don't need to be receiving the Lord with conscious intentional sins. Mm. That is what we call mortal sin. I intentionally do that which I know is wrong and have impact on other lives. But our shortcomings should not suck you from the presence of the Lord. No, he's our purifying light and purifying grace. Mm. He's the one who cleanses us. So we should not be afraid to approach him. Task collectors and sinners were running to him. And his presence made them who? And that is another thing that is drawn to attention. There is something you have to be careful. The welfare activity of the early church. They sold everything because they thought Jesus was coming the next minute. They took our come soon to be one year. Hmm. Aha. So there was no need to keep property. And there was not even need to work. So, if you read some of the epistles of St. Paul, he'll be talking about the imminent coming of the Lord, but when he gets to Thessalonians, when he was becoming mature in ministry, he'll tell them, if the hand is not working, you should not eat. Mm. <laughs> then he started going back to stewardship. The Old Testament idea of stewardship in Genesis. Caring of the earth, taking care of nature, mm. making sure that we continue creation, making sure that things are continuing so that life will go on. So, I would this add, that any minister of God who is lazy is not worthy of the name ministry. <laughs> <laughs> Laziness is not part of the calling. Mm. The lazy one is supposed to go and learn from the ant. Mm -hmm. Ministry, him. yes, ministry is not for idle hands. It's for the busy bodies who are working for a living, who are changing the face of the earth and contributing to their own welfare. So ministry is not an escape from the world. It's not an escape from work. It's not an escape to laziness. No, at times, people want to enter into full-time ministry. And they want to become full-time ministers so that they won't work and they'll be fed. So many renewal people have been complaining. Uh, people have been complaining up and down. And the reason why they are complaining is that the church is not taking care of me. Why would the church take care of you? The church doesn't have farms, businesses, and companies and departments to take care of human beings. <laughs> the church, as a body of Christ, is a supporting system we help each other. We help each other. Nobody has it all. Nobody has it all. We help one another so that all of us will be able to enjoy God's presence and enjoy his benevolence. Mm. It was not the church that sponsored the early church. No, it was individuals who brought in what they could and then it was given to those who did not have. So it was not as if the church has a pile of money somewhere to be given to the poor and the aged. Now, if all offerings are supposed to be donated to the poor, what will be used to maintain the church buildings? I'm not saying the church should not help. Somebody said church money should not be used to help. That is very wrong. Extremely wrong. The church money could be used to help people. But we should know the budget of the church. We should know the expenditure pattern. And looking, look, uh, using my community as an example, bills and allowances are to the tune of around 4,700 Ghana per month. And our total offering is 2,800. <laughs> So you can imagine how much will be left for the poor and aged. So we have to consciously have time to raise money for that purposes. And we do that periodically. At times we bring in a bull, take offering for a particular person in need, or we solicit for help for those who are in trouble. 
At times, I even do it online, her asking people can help. I think two days ago, a lady was hospitalized and she needed the money to pay her bills so that she could be discharged. And unfortunately, she had it. None. She was looking for just 720 Ghana. And because of that, she was imprisoned in a hospital bed. <laughs> and you had to seek for friends to contribute 10 Ghana, 20 Ghana here to help. And that is very important. But a minister should not have that mindset of the church will take care of me. So I'm not going to work. Mm -hmm. So I will encourage those who think I want to enter full time ministry that God is not against working. Paul, the greatest worker in the New Testament, never stopped working for a living. He was a tent maker. We will discover in his writings anywhere he went, he was working with his hands. That is why he became friends of Priscilla and Aquila, another tent makers. And they collaborated to feed themselves and to work. So if there is a way you can make money to support yourself in ministry, go ahead and the Lord will bless you for that. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Oh, that's coming so, Father, I see something here. Each day with one heart, they regularly went to the temple, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. Good. Because the temple was the Jewish temple. It was the temple that depended on animal sacrifice. Oh, okay. Even after Jesus has resurrected, they were still killing sheep every day. <laughs> two in the morning, two in the evening. To offer sacrifice to the Lord. Okay. And they were Jews. You know, Jesus didn't come to establish a new religion. He was coming to fulfill the old ones. Mm. So he would tell us in Matthew, I didn't come to condemn the law and the yeah. prophets. I came That's to fulfill it. it. Gradually, we would discover that the Christianity, Christianity didn't start because of the intention of Christians. Christianity started because the Jews pushed them out of the church. Mm. When you read John mm -hmm. chapter 9, the healing of the man born blind, mm -hmm. the parents were afraid to say Jesus killed the man because it has been declared that anybody who says Jesus is Lord or who promotes Jesus will be sacked from the temple. So it is the Jews who pushed the disciples out of the temple. And that is why they started their own fellowships and then the Christian religion began. Otherwise, the faith Jesus brought who have become a purification of Judaism and a continuation of Judaism. Mm. That is why last week I said Jesus came to establish a Christian movement and not a Catholic church. Mm. You remember I made that statement in person. Mm, mm, mm. You uh -huh. know, Father, even as we are reading, I'm taking note of the fact that here, there is no mention of church. Good. It just says community. Yes. The Christian community. And the churches in the New Testament are communities. What happened was that anyone with a big hall qualified to have a church. So a big hall was enough. What mattered is where can we break bread? Mm, so it was just about coming together to break bread and uh, not with titles and yes. big names for yes. uh, okay and let's get an encouragement here so if you are in a parish community and the church building is being used for choir practice don't say the church is occupied so there's no prayer meeting directly speaking to renew our members some of them will stop going for prayer meeting with the excuse that the church is being used for choir practice stand at the park go to the classroom go to the social center meet at the street corner where two or three are gathered in my name, God said what? I am there in their midst. When you're having a big program, you want to go outdoor. So why can't you have a prayer meeting outdoor mm. if the church is occupied? At times, you get to occasions, you know it is not possible to have a prayer session in church. An example is when it is being decorated for Christmas festivity. Mm -hmm. Or there is a wedding and you have all night on a Friday. Don't say because of the wedding we are canceling the program. Have an alternative way of praying. Mm -hmm. Get to the field. Get to the mm -hmm. open space. It even says homes. Anybody with a bigger home. Get and home. pray. Yes. And that is even beautiful. Having the Lord with you in your house and community. And I've been doing that for communities. Uh, family altars. Mm -hmm. And throwment to the sacred heart. Mm -hmm. You go half mass with them. So dedicate their room as an altar and a sanctuary for the Lord. And then you bless the sacred image for them. And they use as a prayer room. Mm -hmm. And that is very beautiful. And I encourage families to do that. Yeah. The only difference there is that there they could break bread there, but now there are a lot of laws. You cannot break bread in your house. <laughs> there must be a That's priest. another question I was the going liturgical, to ask. The liturgical laws. <laughs> because discipline is important for longevity. Okay. It is said that motivation and grace make us move. Discipline makes us grow. As we grow, we need to be disciplined. Otherwise, people may take things for granted and do the wrong things. All in the name of movement. Or in the name of Nyami Asrami. Uh, so there had to be that kind of discipline. You remember? Hey, no. 
I once gave Holy Communion in the palm of a calic. After two weeks, she told me something and I shivered. Father, do you know what I did? The communion you gave me, I didn't take you. I put in my handkerchief and I went to place on my altar and I adore him every day. What? I said, Sister, when you get to a house, can we take it? You know there are children in the house. Yes, they can desecrate the Lord. It will not have been anything bad to have Jesus in your home. But the challenge is that you cannot save, keep it the way the church will want the sacred speeches to be cut. So please go and eat it for me. Hey, but when you take it within you, you can adore yes. him within you. So imagine this lady had breaking of bread in the house every day. If you are not careful, the next time you come up, and it happened in the Corinthian church. Mm -hmm. They were getting booze. Yes. They would take enough blood. <laughs> enough blood of Jesus. <laughs> All in the disguise of having the Lord's Supper. And they were boozing. So they finish and some are drunk and some are hungry. I, I heard a story of somebody going, you know, some churches use uh, bread and then um, drinks. Yes. And one person among them, who is the mother, most, she mostly does that. She will go and take the drink. She will drink it and bring the bread home to her children. You get the point. <laughs> so that is why a lot of discipline is coming in and you cannot be breaking the bread anywhere. But if your house is conducive enough, father will come and inspect it is where the, there can be masses there. I do that for few people. But note that he cannot be going to every home. It's not that yeah. easy. Ministry. I think that, Father, you know, now our numbers are large and yes. huge. Yes. So probably this whole issue of cells and then Good. smaller groupings can also help. Basic Christian community. Yes. And that's how the church acted in the ancient time. And everybody was an evangelist. You know, we over focus on the clergy. The clergy. Our generation is too much cleric conscious. You know, you will see a very calic, ardent, serious and active writing on Facebook. We don't see our priest evangelizing. <laughs> and he himself is not evangelizing. Mm. He feels it should be father. But he forgets the baptismal mandate. Then the daily mass mandate to go and become evangelist. Mm. How I wish every calic can go through cospo. Mm. To understand the dynamism of soul winning. And how important it is to allow the Lord to lead the way. Mm. And I think that is a challenge we need to work at. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Priest, bishop, conscious. And you know, the danger now is that priests are blaming bishops. Bishops are blaming room. Parishioners are blaming priests. Nobody wants to work. That's a challenge. So, mm. so Father, so now that uh, by mm. God's grace, life in the spirit seminar is gradually taking full effect in all parishes, so far as Catholics is concerned. Uh, isn't it the way to introduce the ideal of the gospel like you just mentioned? That's beautiful, but the danger with life in the spirit now is that people are reading the book. Which is danger? What is happening now is that people are not going through life in the spirit seminar. They are going through the book that is used for life in the spirit seminar. So you can get to a parish and somebody is done with having a spirit seminar but still have nothing of the basis of Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, let me use talk four for example. Mm -hmm. A call to be a disciple of Jesus. That talk is not supposed to be a one day talk. Because if you look at the outline, it's supposed to take the person through the sacramental life of the church. Mm -hmm. All the seven sacraments. Yeah. And you think one hour talk is enough. No, it's not. So I told somebody, life in the spirit seminar has sessions, not weeks. It's a program with sessions, not weeks. Also, the parishioners I took to life in the spirit seminar, I, I reduced them to 17 people at the end. I did the interview myself. And it took us three months to get to top five. I know <laughs> I, I went through LSS for three or four months. Really? Good. Yes. You are and surprised? You know, the way we do, <laughs> we, do one, we do one seminar every week. Yes, that's what I did once yes. a week. Yes, so when you do once for this weekend, the scriptural references and things you have to go through mm. from Monday to the Friday yeah. mm. before you are taking through another topic. But then you would have probably gone through a lot. If you have any questions and things, you would have met and the, the team yeah. to be addressed. And another thing is that you have, if you have an educationist, a teacher, as part of the team, mm. there could be opportunity of evaluating what happened last week okay, to yeah. discover whether they actually understood the talk or, or they just sat to listen. Exactly. Mm. Because if it is about God the Father loves me personally, 
and I went through, I should be able to come for the next session convinced that I don't care what my parents does, do. Mm, yeah. It doesn't well, matter what my bosses do to me. Sure. Mm. It doesn't matter the powers around me. Okay. I am enjoying God's love. Okay, Father, I won't cut you. I don't want us to get too deep with LSS. Yes. 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 So we would want to move on, but the basic message that I think we have gotten here is that they dedicated themselves to the teachings, breaking of bread, and Father, all the Fellowship. Things. Yes. And Fellowship. the teaching was there, Leo. Yes. You know, it wasn't just there, Leo. They even said something here. It says that um, uh, <laughs> every day, yes, that's what they I said regularly. Regular. So it means that in, in, in one the day, day, there could be various sessions. Sessions, yeah. <laughs> I told my parishioners, you know what? I was talking to you about the Pentecost in Vienna in my community. And we have it in the mornings from 7 a.m. to 9 o'clock. And I bet you from day four, if you don't come early, you may not get a seat hmm. in the morning. I told them that Pentecost waiting is nine days without work. You are supposed to block everything and stay together in the upper room. Unfortunately, that cannot be possible because we cannot yeah. even feed ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so people will need to go and work so that they can support families and the like. Yeah. So if you are supposed to be meeting in the morning and the evening, don't think the church is expecting too much from you. Mm. For your own good, the two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, you need too small. So you have morning session 7 to 9, evening session 7 to 9. And that is and what is happening. the response is good. Yes, day one, we had 170 something. Yeah, and it's Over not a very big parish too. For day so one. You can imagine. And there will be evening mass this evening with another priest. Mm. And you know, one thing is that our modern ministry fear cost. We don't want to invest. You know, they invested time and energy. Yeah. We Lots must of time. Yes, we must invest time, energy, and money. Well, like this thing that is being streamed. The data doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. It comes from <laughs> MTN and Vodafone. <laughs> uh -huh. And you have to pay for that. Uh -huh. So the fuel I would write from Muntado mm -hmm. to Adunfie wouldn't be the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It has to be from the filling station. And people are afraid to invest. But the truth of the matter is that God is a generous rewarder. Mm. Not just a rewarder, a generous, generous rewarder. Man. He overpays our expenditure. Mm. Mm. I love that he overpays. Yes. <laughs> so don't be afraid. I'm going to hold God mm -hmm. to that. God yes. overpays our expenditure. Yes. <laughs> and you know, you don't even need to pray for it. Keep spending what is in your hand. Mm. You keep putting your strength in your hand. Mm. Yes, just keep spending. Mm. Keep, keep yes, until there is zero. <laughs> no, there have been time that I'm left with 18 Ghana <laughs> and a fuel in the car. Mm. And I drive for a ministry, not knowing whether I will get the fuel back or not. I will return with thousands of this. Mm. Not from the administration at the point you, but I get with somebody I least expected. Mm. Mm. He is extra generous. Mm. You know, many people are not ministering because they count the cost. Mm. Don't count, count the cost, count the love. Mm. When you count the love of God, you are ready to kill yourself. And you won't mind walking from here to your mouth. <laughs> mm, 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 Just to mm, make people know him mm, and love mm, him. Mm, Amen. Mm. God bless you so much, Father. We have really been enriched today. God always knows best, even though we didn't start on time. You testify to the glory of God that you have learned a lot. And I pray that whatever we have learned today will journey with us throughout this week. And not just journey, would we'll sing from our head to our hearts. Father said something. God overpays our budget. I, won't, I can't forget this. So be generous to the work of God. And he will overpay your budget. This is something you can hold God on to. If you think it's not happening, quote Father Joe. He said it. <laughs> Possibly you have not waited. That's why it's not happening. God, those who budget are overpaid, are those who have already waited and are working with his prompting. Okay. Not those who have assumed I can work for him. Okay, yeah, that's another addition. Yes, it's not about <laughs> assuming to be working for him. It's about spirit-led ministries. Okay. If you sense the Lord asking you to do. That don't count the cost. Okay. So please, open your heart up and allow the Lord to speak to you. Sense that God is asking you to support the CCR Ghana Radio. Oh. 
this one you don't need to pray for two hours even as you are listening god has already spoken to you <laughs> so like i said earlier we are sorry for starting late but we thank you so much for joining us thank you brother ben for being here with us today uh, let's see some of our messages here Lamba, oh Lamba, we thank God for today. God bless you, my sister. Oh, God bless you too. Uh, somebody, okay, Amen. Do Boye Patrick says, Amen. Mba, that love listening, love listening always. May the Spirit impact you always to give more spiritual food to His church. Thank you to brother, sisters. <laughs> Forgive me, you. I always bite my tongue when I have to be pronounced. Just call her Felicity. Okay, Felicity, yes. true. <laughs> That's her name. I wonder why she's writing French. <laughs> Akompo, oh, my husband, he says, wow, wonderful teachings. God bless you and the entire team. God bless you too and bless your ministry wherever you are. Samuel Ayeka says, thank you for taking your time to simplify the teachings of the apostles for us. May God in his goodness continue to strengthen you to proclaim his word. Amen. Doboye Patrick says, powerful teaching. And Felicity says, yeah, don't be afraid to approach Jesus. The church is a support system. Uh, thank you, Father. Ephony says, perfect teaching. Felicity, again, discipline makes us grow. Kawuki Ibra says, thank you for this wonderful teaching. Where two or more gather in my name, I'm in their midst. Dear brothers and sisters, let's always gather in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Nanekia Olivia says, thank you, Father. Love Mba says, hmm, Father, God bless you so much. God be a help. Felicity us. Eja Bafo says, thanks for your teaching. May God bless you. In cancer says, thanks, Father. Uh, God bless you, Father. Uh, Esther Ekuban says, I'm blessed. And then Signa Sebastian. Though I joined late, but I enjoyed it. God bless you all. Esther Ekuban again says, Father, God bless you for your powerful words. And then Augustine Amponsa says, Praise the Lord now and forever. Watching you live from Tema, I'm very blessed. Yo, we thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, our one and only production manager. He says, God bless you. That is Anthony. Hey, sorry, you. That? that is our director. Our, our director says, God yeah. bless you. <laughs> Prosper and so says, Father is deep. God bless you. And then Mba again says, God overpays us. Amen. Amen. So on this note, I want to say a very big thank you to our production manager, Mr. Andrew Osei Asibe Bonsu. He's always behind the cameras and there, trying his best to make sure that we all hear. When you go on your knees and you pray, remember him, that the Lord will bless him abundantly and answer all the desires of his heart. Amen. Amen. The dance issue one. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Please, any final, uh, brother? Greetings to Ejaba for in Sierra Leone. He's my biological brother. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. And Father Emba, thank you. You are all very busy, but always with us and motivating us privately. Emba that. Mm. Emba that. Yes. Oh, he's a mm. priest. Yes, as and Father Prosper. A lot of priests really listen. Okay. We thank for all of them. Please, it is Pentecost Novena. If your church is not praying, pray on your own. Hmm. I have three audios. If you can reach me on WhatsApp, I can send them to you to be praying with yourself. F sorry, my community is not English, so don't be asking me for English audios. <laughs> English audios, our sister, yeah, Bridget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is Adun Fio community streaming live? Masses, yes. No, I'm talking about the novena. Uh, we'll uh, yes, 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 yes. Our production manager says yes. Yeah. So if your parish is not having it, just be on this page, like the page, yes. and follow the page. So that Share. any time there's a video, straight away you know and follow. You get it. It's not yeah. only this program that goes on on the station. A lot of programs. From Monday to Friday, yes, there are programs. And Sundays, masses are streamed. Um, uh, there is one sister, Efwa, who says, Father, please, when are you visiting Western Region? To be precise, Takrade. <laughs> when the parish priest invites me, the okay. bishop will let me come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we will have to uh, end here for today. And we hope to meet again next week, same time. Father, your prayer. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for being with us and for speaking to us. Mm. We desire to be like the apostles. 
Give us your spirit and your grace and strengthen us with your will and your glory. Be with all who are ministering in this Pentecost novena. And may the church be renewed. And may personalities be renewed. Mm. And may the face of the earth be renewed. Mm. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with spirit. your spirit. And may Almighty God bless and keep you with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. And we hope to be with you.